<clears throat> All right, I'm now live for this super full moon in Libra. I'll give you guys a second to come in. If you're catching this not live, I would ask you to please make sure that you give me, if you're watching on YouTube, a thumbs up and comment because it really helps get uh, my content out there to others and reach out to more people who would like to see stuff like this moon circle virtually. So, um, and if you're watching this live, um, what I would really appreciate too is if you guys can uh, comment and like talk amongst each other too in this live. Even in the comments uh, as well, if, again, you're catching this after, it is not live anymore because once I'm done filming this live, it will be posted up onto my Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, so, we are talking about the full moon in Libra. If you did not see uh, my post from earlier, about two days ago, things you may would like to have on you. If you don't have these things, it's totally okay as long as you are here with an open mind and an open hat because we're in Libra and Libra's all about the hat because it's ruled by Venus. Venus is about love and emotions, which connects again to the hat, the hat chakra. So <clears throat> if you have essential oils such as lavender, which is actually what I have going right here, you may not be able to see it. But I have lavender oil going in um, my essential oil burner. I have candles going for those who did sign up for the Reiki and Deeksha. Uh, so if you're not watching this live, um, that's totally okay. You're still going to receive the Reiki. You're still going to receive the Deeksha if you did sign up because it is a universal healing. It will come to you when you are ready to receive and be open to it. Uh, and with the Deeksha, Make sure that you focus, you have an intention of what it is that you would like to manifest in your life. And if you don't know what that is, just be open to say, give me whatever it is that I need right now. And that's what the Deeksha does for you. It's like a shortcut to manifestation. And um, so, yeah. So we're in this super full moon in Libra. So super full moon basically means it's a full moon, but it's much closer to the earth. So the energy of it is much more potent. And this is in Libra, which is a cardinal sign. So if you're a Libra sun, a Libra rising, or an Aries sun or Aries rising, because that is its polarity, you guys will be affected the most. And if you're another cardinal sign, such as a Capricorn or a Cancer, you will be affected even more too, just because, again, it's in a cardinal sign and that's what you guys are. Now, because I do Western tropical astrology, I like to focus on the sun and rising signs with uh moon aspects so if you don't know what you're rising and that's okay but if you do know what your rising is you're going to be more affected through that than anywhere else in your uh, natal chat now libra is about relationships of all kinds and finding a sense of balance and a sense of harmony so libra really wants to find you know even if you don't have libra in your natal chat you still have libra somewhere in it in some kind of house. So wherever you have that, um, anyways, so <laughs> we all have some type of Libra influence energy in us is what I'm trying to say. Even if you don't have it directly in your chat, like me personally, I have no Libra, no Aries whatsoever at all in my chat, but I do still have Libra in there with like the seventh house because Libra is influenced by the seventh house. Uh, so like for me, my sun sign is in the seventh house. So the way I communicate or the way I show myself off, um, I really care about my relationships and my partnerships, even though I am a Scorpio sun. Um, so I really want to get into talking about this super full moon. Full moons are all about releasing, letting go and illuminating things that we still have not confronted or moved on from or highlighting things that we really just need to let go of so if you've been noticing like you feel more tension in this certain aspect or this relationship with this person or these situations with these people it's because the moon is highlighting that and that's why people tend to feel more emotional during full moons because again it's that beaming that highlighting of hey we're going to put this thing in the spotlight 
and you're going to be feeling the emotions of this particular thing. And since we're with Libra, Libra, uh, this is going to be like the best full moon we're going to have of this year. And it's the first full moon of the new astrological year too. So I think it's, it's uh, starting us out pretty good, pretty easy. So we're really focusing on the relationships that we have with other people. Now in the sky, right? In order to have a full moon, it has to be the exact opposite of its polarity, which is what that means, opposite polarity. Uh, so the sun is in Aries and we have the moon in Libra at eight degrees. We also have Venus conjunct with Libra along with uh, Chiron in Aries. So Venus and Chiron are both in Aries conjunct with the moon. So Venus is about love and relationships and it rules. That's what rules Libra. And then we have Chiron, which is the wounded healer in Aries too. So it's really focusing on the relationships that we have with ourselves and how we can heal ourselves with this conjunction. We also have a grand trine, which is a very promising, one of the best aspects you can have um, in astrology. So we have a grand trine in all air signs. So we have the moon in Libra, which is an air sign. And then we have Mars, which is planet of action and passion in Gemini, which wants to communicate. How can I get to this? Let me question this. And, and you know, ask lots of questions in communicating with taking action on things and Libra and the moon with like my emotions harmonizing to find a balance and harmony with people. And then we have Saturn in Aquarius, which is discipline, being diplomatic, um, taking responsibility. And Aquarius is like, now let's gather some people together and let's work as one to better everyone around us, right? So we have this grand trine, which is working out really great right now. Again, this is why this, this full moon is a really nice aspect to have, like the, the nicest full moon we're going to have of the year. <laughs> well, I feel anyways. Um, so I want to get into, like we, we talked about how Libra is about relationships, partnerships, relationships of all kinds, relationships with yourself, relationships with your partner, relationships with your friends, relationships with your coworkers, relationships with everybody. <laughs> all kinds of relationships. The relationships, blah, 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 blah. the relationships you have with your family. Um, so that's really what this full moon is really focused on. And full moons are always felt three days before and three days after. So the energy of this we will have been feeling and we're going to continue to feel for the next three days. So if you're watching this after the full moon, totally okay. It's still going to be relevant. You're watching this for a reason in that very moment of time and you're hearing something that you need to hear. Um, so we talked about the grand trine, we talked about the conjunction. I want to get into the numerology aspect of this too, right? So all in all, this ends up coming to the number nine. I'm not going to break everything down, but it comes to the number nine. Once you put all the numbers together with the month, the date, and then 2021 and everything, we'll get to a four with a month and then we'll get to a five with the year, put it together. It's a nine and it's about a completion. We have, we have finished something and it's like, what perfect time can we literally have the number nine for this full moon? Cause full moons are about completion. It's a time to let go, right? We're releasing. We have completed a cycle. That's why she's shining so big and so full because she has finished her full cycle. That's why she is full. So now it's time to release and let go. And it's a time to pause and slow down, right? So if you've been feeling like really overwhelmed um, lately, this full moon is saying it's time to pause, time to slow down, time to focus on what it is that I need to let go of and just relax, you know, just, just relax. <clears throat> um, I want to get into a quick rundown. Uh, so pay attention to your sun and rising. This is going to be a quick rundown. So there's no need to skip ahead. So we're going to start with Libra because the full moon's in Libra and you guys are going to be focused on the first house. And this has to do with your identity, yourself, how you come up and present yourself to others and your authenticity. And then Scorpio, Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Rising, this is going to be affecting your 12th house. 12th house has to do with your secrets, 
um, <clears throat> your unconsciousness, your spirituality, and your psychic abilities. So this is the relationship that you have in those areas. And then with Sagittarius Sun, Sagittarius Rising, this is going to be affecting your 11th house. So the relationships that you have with humanity, the relationships you have with your friends, the relationship you have with being active, with your activism, right? Your rebellion, your, your stepping out to fight for the rights of others. Then we have Capricorn suns, Capricorn risings. This is going to be affecting your ninth house, the relationship you have with higher education, the relationship you have with your wisdom, your philosophical um, being. Then we have Aquarius. Oh, whoa, I totally like screwed that up because I'm going too fast. Sorry, Capricorn, it's not your ninth house. <laughs> I totally skipped the tenth house. So Capricorn, Sun and Rising, it's actually the relationship that you have with your career, which is perfect fitting because Capricorns are very hardworking, very diligent people. You guys are all about the career, the future, setting long-term goals. So the relationship that you have with that and the relationship that you have with the public eye and how you present yourself to the world. Then we have Aquarius, Sun and Aquarius Rising. This is going to be the ninth house for you guys, right? And the ninth house has to do again with higher education, your wisdom, um, your philosophical side of things. And then with Pisces, we have um, this effect, a Pisces sun, Pisces rising. This is affecting your eighth house. And this has to do with the relationship that you have with how you, uh, tr the transformation from within yourself, death, um, how you view death, how you view the death of your ego, letting things go and um, the relationship that you have with these deep-rooted secrets, right? Then we have Aries, Aries Sun, Aries Rising, right? You guys are gonna be affected in the seventh house because again, you're the polarity of Libra because you guys are technically the first house because you're the first sign. Libra is the seventh house, the seventh sign. So because you're Polarities are going to be the exact opposite. So the seventh house for Aries Sun, Aries Risings is where that's affected. So this is going to be your love, um, romance, relationships, partnerships, all the relationships that you have. That's what seventh house is all about. And then we have Taurus Sun, Taurus Rising. Like me, I am a Taurus Rising. This is going to be affecting our sixth house so our health our wellness our daily routines the relationship we have with this the relationship that we're trying to build maybe getting healthier um libra is all about uh kind of like how can i be the best and and really likes aesthetics so probably maybe working on having a better body or something like that that's that's where because because libra likes to look and feel good now with Gemini, Gemini suns, Gemini risings. This is going to be affecting your fifth house of your creativity, your courage, the relationships that you have with children, um, maybe your own children too. Then we have Cancer suns and Cancer risings. This is going to be affecting your fourth house, which is what Cancer already rules. So you're in your home in the in the sign right now, and you're also a cardinal sign, so everything is pretty much boom with cancer right because again full moon is in a cardinal sign you are a cardinal sign your fourth house is being um highlighted and your natural placement for a cancer is the fourth house because you're the fourth sign so this is going to be affecting the relationships that you have at home the relationships you have with your family and the emotional aspect of everything then we have leo's Leo suns and Leo risings. This is going to be affecting your third house, your curiosity, your active listening, the way you communicate, the relationship you have with asking who, what, when, where, why. Um, and then we have Virgo. In Virgo suns, Virgo risings, this is going to be affecting your second house of values, the relationship you have with your money, the relationship you have with the security, the relationship you have with the valuables and finances. Now that we have the astrology part done, I want to get into a collective reading 
So we're going to be using the right of weight deck and I just want to kind of see, pull a card and see what's the energy for everybody here in this moment with this uh, full moon. I have the eight of wands and the only reason why I'm laughing is because the last time I used this deck, this card came flying out. So, and that was Wednesday. It's what Sunday now. So, so it was Wednesday night. So just about three days uh, before the full moon when um, this had come out. So I really feel like this is the energy that things are happening quick. Things are happening fast. Things are coming in uh, quicker than expected with this full moon. We may be uh, ready to release a lot of things um, and letting go of stuff faster and, and a lot more with ease with this full moon. I feel like there's been some tension and anxiety that's been like holding on to us where it's been like stressing us out way too much. And we feel like, you know, I keep getting tested, I keep getting tested and the energy of this full moon is going to be so potent, so powerful, where it's going to be this huge release of like, wow, like I didn't expect to feel and release this so quickly. And, and I also feel like, let's see, let, let me pull something else. Ah, another wands, 10 of wands. Right. And, it, and it's like, I feel like also some of us with this full moon, we're carrying so much and it's like it's time to let go of some of these things because these relationships that we have with these people it's like we've been people pleasing we've been doing too much the energy exchange hasn't been equal and and now we're coming to terms of like i'm ready to let go and drop this person drop this relationship or literally just change how you deal with them and and change like the energy that you're putting out because you're like, hey, I've been putting too much energy into you and into this relationship and I'm not receiving the same. So I'm ready to gather things up and kind of walk away and put more into myself. That's what I'm getting with this read. And it makes perfect sense again with the, the relationships and what Libra's all about, taking and giving equally a balance and finding harmony in all kinds of relationships. And, and letting go of that, I can't keep people pleasing because when I do that, I'm hurting myself and we don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to pull from the Moonology deck because it's full moon and see what's the energy of the Moonology. What's the message that everybody can needs to, needs to know. We have adjustments are required. We have the third quarter moon. Adjustments are required. So we need to make adjustments in the relationships that we, that we have with others. We need to make adjustments within ourselves and, and really notice like, hey, I've been, again, where do I need to, to make this shift? Where is it that it's okay to, you know, take a step back? Or, or some of you maybe need to take a step forward because some of you have been taking more than you've been giving and, and you're noticing that. And you're like, hey, I need to kind of shift and move some things around within myself so I can give you back more of what, what you've been giving me, you know, to, to match that space. And, and vice versa of, hey, like, I've been giving too much and, and speak on it. I, I'm feeling like a lot of people are going to be wanting to communicate and speak on, hey, you know, I feel like I've been doing this, but you haven't been doing the same for me. Why is that? Why, why haven't you been doing that? And again, that goes back into this grand trine with Mars being in Gemini. Mars in Gemini wants to ask questions, wants to speak up, wants to have this conversation to, to find out a solution with this grand trine we have. Because Libra is all about find that balance and harmony and asking questions. And, and Aquarius is like, hey, yeah, let's all get together and just, and just figure this out. And, and how can we move past this and, and, you know, go on, go on with our lives and move on for the better. So that is the collective reading for everyone here. <clears throat> now, again, I want to remind those who did sign up with the Reiki, you will receive this when you are open to it. I have candles burning. I guess my camera's not really picking up on them, but there are candles burning over here. 
So once these are finished burned out, that's when the Reiki will be fully set out to you. Um, so we're going to get into the meditation path. Yeah. So I did something, um, that I haven't done before and I was feeling like, why not? Let's just do it. I was feeling kind of, um, impulsive, right? And we're in airy season. A lot of us are feeling more impulsive. So I am grateful for this Aries energy because um, I decided to put my own spin into meditation. So half of this is from somebody else and then half of it is my own meditation that I put into it. And I'm actually really excited to share this with you guys. So it's kind of like half me, half not me, but I haven't done my own actual meditation before. Now, before we do this, like always, I'm going to play a Tibetan bowl. Now, I want everybody, oops, I invite everyone to get into a comfortable position. If you are taking a bath, lay back, close your eyes, relax. If you are in bed, again, lay back, close your eyes, relax. If you're sitting down, make sure you're just comfortable, you're in a cleared space. And I want you to close your eyes and envision a white light surrounding you. And this white light is beaming down from the full moon onto your aura. And I'm going to play this Tibetan bowl. And I want you to imagine all of the stress and the negativity that is in your aura field being taken away and, and pushed out, right? So you need to close your eyes and listen to the ball. begin the meditation now. So I want you to close your eyes. I want you to focus on the breath. I want you to take a deep breath in. And hold. Breathe out all of that stress. We're going to ask the full moon to fill us with gratitude and reveal all the magic around us. Quiet your mind. Become aware of your breath. We're going to inhale again. your belly expanding as you inhale. Hold. Breathe out. Inhale again, expanding the belly.
imagine you see this balloon on the ground. I want you to pick this balloon up and I want you to think about the relationships that you have. Think about the relationships you have with your friends, the relationships you have with your family, the relationship you have with your neighbors, the relationships you have with your co-workers. And I want you to think of a time where you felt as though you were being a people pleaser. When you made yourself uncomfortable in order to make sure that they felt comfortable. Now I want you to imagine how this made you feel. Now take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, hold this balloon. And I want you to imagine putting this balloon to your mouth. And I want you to breathe out all of those feelings that were not balanced and not an equal exchange in these relationships. Breathe out into this balloon Keep breathing into it, blowing it up as big as possible of all the times you felt that you were a doormat, a people pleaser, giving so much of yourself that you got nothing in return. I want you to fill this balloon up with all of that unfair feelings and energy. How big does your balloon get? I want you to tie this balloon. And I want you to tie it thinking about these boundaries that you're going to be putting in your relationships with these same people, not allowing people to walk over you anymore, and allowing yourself that space of speaking up and being fair to you. And I want you to let this balloon go. Watch it float above you, letting go of these relationships, letting go of that energy exchange that wasn't equal, that wasn't balanced, that was not harmonious. As you watch this balloon float away, it gets higher and higher, farther away. It begins to become smaller at each moment it keeps floating up above and away from you. Feel yourself giving gratitude. Gratitude to the relationships and teaching you new boundaries. Sit in this place of gratitude for as long as you'd like. And continue to focus on your breath. Deep breath in. And breathe out. Take 
we can stay in this place of gratitude for the remainder of this meditation and continue to connect. Connecting to the moon, connecting with spirit. We're releasing everything that doesn't serve an equal exchange. We are letting go of those relationships. We ask the full moon to help us open up. Open your heart. Open your heart for understanding. Open your heart for listening. Open your heart for forgiveness. Open your heart to love. Continue to focus on your breath. Be open and receptive to any information that might come to you in this meditation. Trust any sensations that you experience. This is your truth. Continue to focus on your breath. Stay in the space as long as you'd like. Thank the moon and any spirit guides and the relationships that you've had for all the lessons and any information has given you. Release any control of your breath. I invite you back to open your eyes if you're ready. Move your feet, wiggle your toes, with the body again. Roll your neck around if you need to. And now it's that time. It is that time to now write down. What did you get out of this meditation? I want you to write down on, we're going to start with one piece of paper. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We're going to write down one piece of paper. Write down everything that you got from this meditation. Literally everything you got from this meditation. The size of the balloon, the relationships you focused on. Maybe there was one particular person that you focused on. I want you to write everything that you got out of this. I want you to write it down. And then you can pause this video if you're not watching it live. Um, and after you write everything down, I want you to then get three separate pieces of paper and with these three separate pieces of paper I want you to write down one to three things that stood out the most to you in your meditation and you're going to write these down and you're going to start with I release or I let go of blah 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 do not write I want to let go of Write down in present tense. I have let go of. I let go of. Not I'm going to. Do not write. I want to or I'm going to. Don't do that. 
because you're just manifesting to continue to want to do this. You're going to write down as if you have already let it go. And after you write this down, I want you to write the same exact thing down again, the second piece of paper and the third piece of paper. And when this video ends, when we end this live, I invite you to burn your paper safely. You must do it safely. You can do it in a cauldron like I have or a fire pit outside. Just make sure you do it safely. If you don't want to burn it, it's totally okay. You can rip it up. You can uh, put it in water. You can um, bury it. So, but my preference is burning it just because I feel like when you burn things, it happens much faster. Fire magic is quick. And um, that's just how I, that's my preference. That's how I do things. And plus we're in airy season. It's a fire sign. It's all about burn that shit. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this super full moon in Libra. Please make sure that you spam me with comments and likes and um, share this with somebody. It will be uploaded after the live is done. So please share this with someone if you uh, think that this will be relevant to them. And again, I, I want to thank you guys and I will see you in about two weeks where we'll have the new moon in Aries. And um, make sure you keep an eye out for Tarot of the Week, which will be posted tomorrow on Monday. And your April predictions are going to be up very, very soon because we're a few days away from the month of April. And uh, yeah, bye guys.